In this video, we're examining the beats of Daft Punk, the pioneers of French house. They're one of my favorite bands, and I think it's no exaggeration to say that they significantly changed the course of modern dance music. So, we're just going to sample some records and call it a day? Nice. On the contrary, this video is not about sampling. It's about understanding what makes these beats tick. We'll do our own thing with these songs and use whatever fun stuff we have lying around in the studio to build these rhythms from scratch. And what's even better, the result is something you can easily recreate on your own drum machine or in your door. So, time to practice those synth lines, huh? Okay, seems promising. Hello everyone, this is... We begin in the year 1997. Daft Punk have just released their first album Homework, which brought French House onto the global map. At this point, Thomas Bongolter and Guy Manuel de Homem Christo weren't robots yet, but they had a clear vision that they wanted the focus to lie on their music and not themselves, so they already used masks to hide their faces. Legend has it that they created this album entirely in their bedroom. It's a really inspiring story for all bedroom producers, which proves that all you need are some fresh ideas and dedication. And in Daft Punk's case, also a father who's a successful songwriter slash producer with lots of connections to the music industry. And a mastering studio in the garden shed. Yes, that seems helpful as well. I think it's only fitting that we start our journey with the funk. This was the very first song we featured on this channel and the first drum pattern we published on our Patreon. And it's a really good example of Daft Punk's approach on their first two albums. First, they sample a drum beat. In this case, Bounce, Rock, Skate and Roll Part 2 by Vaughn Mason and Crew. 111 BPM. Kicks on the 1 and 3. A backbeat on the 2 and 4 with snares and claps. And 8th note closed hats that tie everything together. Plus an unaccented one on step 16. Then on top of that, Daft Punk program even heavier drums. Here it's a simple kick and clap combo. But since we're already using a drum machine and not acoustic drums as a foundation, we'll try to get this effect in a different way. When the two parts are layered, the 1 and 3 get more oomph because that's where the kick of the acoustic drum kit is. Next up is a short breakbeat segment taken from Barry White's I'm Gonna Love You Just a Little Bit More Baby. The hi-hats need some dynamics. And wherever there are two consecutive kick drum hits, make the first one weaker. That's closer to how a human drummer would play it. Well, I think we're all set now. You could of course further humanize this to taste, but we'll be good robots and make a straight electro version out of this. There are some hi-hat variations, so keep an eye out for those on the sequencer. And depending on whether you see it as a percussion element, we could also include this ever-repeating stab. It's from Zero G's Data File 3, a really old sample collection on CD from the 90s.
Around the World was my first contact with Daft Punk. I vividly remember watching MTV and seeing that fever dream of a music video directed by Michel Gondry. Plus this song features one of my favorite effects of all time. The talk box. This is basically an amplifier and a speaker with a plastic tube attached to it. Any audio signal you feed into it, for example the stylophone, comes out of the tube. And if I put the tube into my mouth, I can then form vowel sounds just by moving my lips and tongue. But let's focus on the beat first. For our version of Around the World, we'll mix some classic drum machine sounds. We'll start with the 707 kick. Four on the floor. Then some 909 hats. The open hats go into the off beat. They're not supposed to ring out though, so we'll choke them each with a closed hat one step after. Makes it sound a lot tighter. But you have to get the balance right. If you turn the closed hat all the way down, it sounds too choppy. Find a spot where you can barely hear its click. Now listen what happens when we add swing. This affects only the closed hats. Everything else is on odd steps. And because the closed hats are not loud enough for you to perceive them as a separate element, you're basically adding swing to the decay of the open hat. Next let's add an 808 hand clap on the 2 and 4. And here's a specialty. In addition to the 909 hats, there's an 808 closed hat on every 8th note. This really ties everything together. Here, have a listen. To give the kick more punch, we'll add some global accents. If you still need more, you can add a compressor to the kick. Or add one to the whole track for even more pumping. And you should always ask yourself the question, did I just overdo it there with a the pumping compression? When the answer is yes, you're good to go. For Revolution 909, we'll use, well, 909 sounds obviously. Kick, hand clap, and hi hats. The intro starts with just the hi hats 126.5 BPM. Of course, this sounds absolutely horrible until we add swing. Crank it up to 66% or triplet swing. Much better. After the intro, add the kick and hand clap. Now for the finishing touch. An element that's used very often in French house is an additional shaker. This is the Lin LM1 Kabasa with a bit of filtering applied. But you could also use the 808 maracas or just some noise. Add accents or different velocities for more dynamics. Now, this might be a 909 beat. But is it a French house beat? No, not yet. 
I know I said this video wasn't about sampling, but Revolution 909 is a really good example to show you how Daft Punk approached many of their tracks. We'll take this short bit out of Moose Tees back to the old school mix of Fun Factory Celebration, make it mono by using only the right channel, speed it up a bit, filter it, put a compressor on it, and loop it. If it sounds like you're in the toilet of a disco, you're doing it right. Doing it right. Now put that on top of our drum track. One small element is missing though. We'll again take the Moose T sample, put a volume envelope on it, smash that into a multiband limiter with extreme settings, and filter it. The result is a metallic clap that we can layer over the existing one. Just dial back the 909 clap to make some room. To me this is one of those rare albums without a single bad track on it. I think it has aged incredibly well and still sounds as fresh as ever. Even 20 years later, people still discover the sources of its many sample fragments. And it's an album that's very important to me personally, since it was my gateway from guitar-based music to electronic music. I'm sure that's true for many of you as well. On this album, Daft Punk continued to combine samples with drum machines, but they took sampling as an art form to a completely new level. And the icing on the cake was Interstellar 5555, a 65-minute anime serving as a music video for the entire album. Also, do you know why this album is called Discovery? Because of all the disco songs they sampled, it's very disco. For one more time, Daft Punk sampled Eddie John's track More Spell On You. This one seems easy enough at first. 123 BPM, kicks on every beat, snare on the 2 and 4. But there's a lot more going on in this track. Most of that's being eaten up by the filter and the bit crusher though, so we're going to try something on the 8 Raw 8 that mimics the feeling of the end result. For the shaker we can use the 808 Maracas, simple groups of three. We'll double that on the hi-hats. But on the 2 and 4 I want something different. An open hat is a little bit too dominant. So instead, we can use the 808's third hi-hat sound, which you get by programming a closed and open hat on the same step. Some accents for good measure to get the beat pumping. The original, of course, featured a human drummer, so let's see how we can bring some of that groove into our pattern. I'll make a copy of this so we can compare it later. First, we'll add a small amount of swing. This will affect only the even steps, so currently only the maracas and closed hats. The swing specifically moves them here and here off the grid to the right. And if your sequence has micro-timing, then you can also nudge those on the offbeats to the right. Let's say by 18%. That's close to a 96th note value. Don't touch the kick and snare. These have to stay absolutely on the grid. Here's how this will transform the beat. Because these two are a little bit late, the instruments on the following step that are on the grid will seem early in comparison. The rhythm will feel like it's dashing or rushing forward, and it will have a lot more bounce to it. Compare this to the previous version where everything is on the grid. This sounds faster, doesn't it? I'll double the length of this pattern to 32 steps, so I can add a small hi-hat variation at the end. That pattern is done. Now we can use it as a basis for the second one, so let's make a duplicate. First I'll delete the bits we don't want. And now I'll copy the first quarter of the bar and paste it a few times in a row. Don't overwrite the ending. We want to keep that. B 
because of the swing and micro-timing, this creates a stuttering beat effect, even though we're not using a sampled loop. The next pattern is a very typical house pattern, so let's switch drum machines. The 909 plays this really simple straight 4 on the floor beat, with some short open hats. But the magic happens when you add some percussion. The first element is a shaker. Not like this though, as is so often the case, the secret ingredient is swing. The second element is a tambourine. Alternate the accents to make it sound more realistic and less like a rapid fire machine gun. This also needs swing, but not as much as the shaker. Now we just have to layer them together. Wonderful! Let's hear everything in context. I have to admit, with all the filtering and bit crushing, I found it almost impossible to accurately decipher the different elements in aerodynamic. So I retraced Daft Punk's steps and puzzled it together using the original sample, Il Maquillage Lady by Sister Sledge, and analyzed that instead. I've loaded up some Lindrum samples by Gold Baby. And here's what I got. We'll start with 32 steps, two bars. We don't even have to change the BPM. It's the same as one more time. The snare is the steady element here. Just put it on the 2 and 4. I lay at it with the rim shot. This makes it cut through a bit better. The kick is a lot more interesting. After it announces the beginning of the bar, it dances around the snare. Then a nice hi-hat combo. And two crash cymbals. Doesn't sound quite right though. In aerodynamic this drum pattern was pieced together from lots of small fragments. For example, the bits with the cymbal are only this long. This means the cymbal needs to be cut off here, just before the open hat. Trim the cymbal sample until the timing sounds right. Likewise with the hi-hats. Choose a nice short closed hat. And cut the open hat down to the length of an eighth note. Here, compare the before and after. The resulting choppiness adds to the impression that this was stitched together from a bigger loop. Let's unroll the pattern to four bars and I'll make some small changes to the new second half. Bar 4 gets another kick. 
And this closed head moves to the left and makes way for a crash symbol. Let me quickly show you two additional elements you can layer on top of this beat. A tiny shaker or kabasa ornament. This repeats every other bar. And a row of 16th note hi-hats. The velocities or accents should alternate. That makes this a little bit more palatable. Who doesn't love a good CR78 pattern? So let's use the TR success to program the interlude. Kick. Snare. Hi-hats. And instead of that weird springy sound of the original, let's use the CR78 tambourine, which is also kind of weird and springy. Some reverb. Done. Now it's time for French House Kitchen, the cooking show with the French touch. Welcome to the kitchen in a French house. To give our kick the French touch, we need a kick sample from a disco record. Then we eye-pass it to make some room, add a fat kick, A tiny bit of EQ will bring out the knock and definition of the kick. Don't overdo it! 12 decibels at most. Then press everything together really hard with a compressor. And finally, use a clipper to make that shit loud. Put that into the fridge, and meanwhile, we will prepare a fantastic drum machine beat that will fit this sample like a glove. Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger is based on 8 bars of Edwin Birdsong's Cola Bottle Baby. So let's start by examining this first. It's a bit of a whopper, so I already punched the pattern in, and I'll give you a quick tour of the important bits. Remember that you can find all the drum pattern transcriptions from this video and many more on our Patreon. Over 100 to be exact. Let's have a listen. The foundation is fairly simple. Kicks on every beat, snare on the 2 and 4, and a hand clap on the 4. 
This kick is unaccented in bar 1 and 5. The only thing breaking the pattern is a little snare fill at the end of bar 6. Now, what's really interesting is the timing. The unaccented closed hat on step 4 is always a tad late, about a 96th note. You might ask yourself, why don't we just use swing? That's because the amount of swing varies. It's different on the hats, it's different on the shaker, and it's different on the right cymbal, which has no swing at all, except at the very end of bar 8. Everywhere else it has to be played straight though, or else it sounds wrong. Regarding the shaker, it starts in bar 3, and in the original it sounds eerily like a CR78 hi-hat. So naturally, that's what I used here. The beats are accented, which gives it that metronome feeling. And don't forget the crash symbol at the very beginning of the pattern. It's going to be really important when we use this as a sample. Speaking of which... Now we're going to sample ourselves and reassemble the beat like a puzzle. You know the drill by now. For Digital Love, Daft Punk sampled the best part of George Duke's I Love You More, which already contains the guitars and lead synth hook, and of course some acoustic drums. 124.7 BPM. This will be two bars long. And a nice little snare and tom combo at the end to conclude the loop. Some dynamics for the kick. And let's not hit the snare too hard. Finally, the right symbol. Ooh, I 
love that part. Okay, the drum part of the sampled loop is in the bag. After we put a high pass filter on it, we have enough room to add a drum machine. In this case, an Oberheim DMX, or rather, samples of it. And here's your complementary tambourine part. This needs a bit of swing. Full velocity on the 1 and 3. And slightly alternating low velocities on the others. By building a ramp, you can give a little bit more weight to every other beat. And whenever you feel ready to make the room shake, add the kick drum on every beat. Now, before I press that play button, originally we wanted to make this video about all four of Daft Punk's albums, but we soon realized that we had to split it up. Finishing this video already took us a few months, so subscribe if you don't want to miss part two. And a big shout out to all of our patrons. We love making these videos, and it's thanks to your support that we're able to devote so much time to making them. Would you please stop poking that damn sandwich?